Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Researchers waiting anxiously as the world waits to see what kind of impact the Omicron variant of COVID-19 could have. Hear from some of the first people to begin research on that variant and what they say is different this time. We're here for uh, the worst kind of tragedy. Yeah, we have the very latest in that school shooting that left three dead and nearly a dozen others injured it happened in Michigan. Why police say this story could have had a much worse ending. And here at home, a new high school offering a flexible schedule and small class sizes opening up on the west side. Coming up, we take you inside the school. And good morning. It's 858. It's 58 degrees and it's the day after No Shave November. That's right. Ends, so. or, de or December 1st. Or December 1st. However you want to say it. <laughs> But yeah, a big shout out to all the folks, to all the guys participating. Uh, Y'all did an awesome job. Uh, number one in the nation as in far the as nation. In, How about that? As huh? far as fundraising goes, wow. so hats off to you guys. Over it, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, raised. that is that is awesome. And here's the leaderboard. Uh, there's, you there's can see little, you yeah. guys were really bringing that money in. David, nice job. Justin, Look nice at Justin job. Justin up there. Over three thousand dollars. Yeah, this is yeah. awesome. And of course. Those numbers wouldn't be there if it wasn't for our viewers and the people that get on the website and, and read our stories there and their contribution to, to helping us fight cancer. So we yes. can't thank you enough because it's you you're the ones that made this happen for yeah us. so we yeah. appreciate that thank you very much and you can see the overall total yeah. there the the twenty four thousand six hundred twenty and yeah we had our goal in the beginning of this was uh ten thousand dollars that was about wow. what we got last year so uh the team and again like david said thanks to your donations have more than doubled what we got uh last year i never asked Steve, what the um, Stephen Cavazos, what the total number of teams that were involved in this. But when you look at that total, let's see, five hundred and eighty-one thousand dollars raised for this whole November. Yes, that's you know you're talking well over a half million dollars raised for. How oh, many? there you go. Dylan says four hundred. Over four hundred teams. teams. Dylan says our producer said over four hundred. So teams, this is so. it's awesome. It's awesome but, to see you know, this. So you know, yeah. thank you to the donations. I know it kind of became a little uh, competitive <laughs> towards the end there uh, when. I think we were, Justin and uh, it was two weather guys going. Yeah, at it, Justin, Justin and Mike, and Mike going, going, going having a good time. back and forth. And uh, I think, you know, the more we talked about it, the more the donations came in. So, you know, thank you for those yeah. donations to the individual uh, people, you know, like David, Mark, Max, Justin and Mike. And also thank you to the, you know, for those donations that went to the whole team. Some of our view viewers donated to the whole case at team. And so it really helps. And, you know, a lot of guys that were involved in this had, had some stories about people that, uh, they have been affected by by cancer and you know a lot of us have family members and, and a lot of you at home we know you have family members and friends that have been affected by cancer so the the main reason that we did this was to bring awareness and especially this month it was was about men and and the awareness and if you want to go get that colonoscopy well if you want to go get it i know you don't probably want to go get it well no but <laughs> you need you need to get checked up and that was the reason that we did this was just to remind men in in your family that cancer can affect them and it can affect you and you need to go get checked up you need to go get that colonoscopy and if you feel like something else is kind of weird in your system strange things going on go to the doctor and get checked up get there's checked there's, there's no reason for you not to do that and it could it could literally be life and death and again from your generous donations 10 different cancer groups and foundations will benefit from this generosity all through next year yeah thank you for all the donations that these viewers have given us this year, we appreciate it. It's going to a great cause. Yeah. So thank you so much. And then that's our website you saw right there. So the competition yeah. is over, like we're right. talking about, but you can still donate or look into the cause. And we have all that information on our website at KSA.com. That's why we love San Antonio so much. Because Very these people step up every time, whatever somebody's asked for uh, for some donations or asked for some help, it doesn't matter what organization it is, you guys always come through for us and uh, we, th we thank you enough. That's why we love living in San Antonio in yes. South Texas. It's so. awesome to be a part of it. Yep, it is. All right, that. here's the nine at nine. Yeah. Authorities say a 15-year-old student opened fire at Oxford High School in Michigan yesterday afternoon, killing three students and injuring seven others and a teacher. An update from officials is expected sometime this morning. The Omicron variant has popped up in two more countries, Japan and Brazil. Dozens of countries have imposed some kind of restrictions on travelers from South Africa. 
The U.S. is considering mandatory COVID testing for everyone entering the country the day before they arrive. There are still no confirmed Omicron cases in the U.S. Should Roe v. Wade, the landmark case that affirmed abortion rights nationwide, be overturned? That's what Supreme Court justices will consider. Starting with oral arguments today, if the justices uphold the Mississippi law to ban abortions after 15 weeks, it would be much easier for other states to ban or more seriously restrict abortion rights. New Mexico authorities continued their investigation into the deadly shooting during the production of the movie Rust. Investigators received a judge's authorization to search PDQ Arm and Prop, which they believe played a role in bringing live ammunition to the set. Heart surgeon and TV personality Dr. Oz is running for the U.S. Senate in the state of Pennsylvania. Oz, who is running as a Republican, is an Ohio native, but he attended medical school at the University of Pennsylvania. The winner in the general election will succeed retiring Republican Senator Pat Toomey. This year's Atlantic hurricane season was one of the most costliest on record. Damages for four of this year's storms topped more than a billion dollars each. Hurricane Ida cost more than $60 billion alone. The good news is the latter part of the hurricane season was quieter than forecasters had predicted. Gas prices are taking a bigger and bigger chunk out of your wallets. The Wall Street Journal says they're up about 50% this year. That pace is the largest percentage increase in at least a decade. Airlines could start to see a hit from the Omicron variant. EasyJet, one of the first big airlines to report earnings since Omicron was identified, says bookings have slowed a bit as customers push back flights. A big change in SEC football. Notre Dame's Brian Kelly is officially in Baton Rouge, Louisiana to become the next head coach of the LSU Tigers. Former head coach Ed Orgerod led the Tigers to a national championship two seasons ago, but the team has struggled since then. That's today's Nine at Nine. And taking a look outside with live cam already at 60 degrees. Things warming up a little quicker than yesterday. Yeah, trying to, and it's going to turn into a pretty nice afternoon. But you see sort of the haze there uh, right along the horizon. A little bit of fog. We had to contend with that this morning. Not necessarily here in San Antonio, but parts of the viewing area. We did have a dense fog advisory. It's gone now. Things are getting better. Let's go outside for you, and we'll show you where some of that fog still resides. Places like Hondo and Pleasanton, which have dealt with the fog all morning long, still dealing with it. It's down to a quarter of a mile visibility there. I, I really think within the hour, you'll see those numbers jump up. Uh, most of the visibility in San Antonio is doing just fine. Uh, temperature wise, 61 Kerrville, 57 New Braunfels, 55 Gonzales, 55 right now in Carrizo Springs. And looking at the uh, satellite picture, we do have some high clouds streaming through. Shouldn't be a big deal. You may see some off and on clouds today, but we're going to call it mostly sunny. We make it up to 75 for high. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And as we all know, it is a new month. We're going to take a look at what we can expect in the month of December. Coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Trans guy, you know, there was some fog Dustin was talking about all morning uh, east of us. It didn't affect our traffic too much this morning. And look at that. You need your sunglasses today. That's for sure. And in your morning headlines, new video from a high school shooting in Michigan and new information about a college student who died during a charity boxing event. Plus why hundreds of packages were just dumped into a ravine and a small dog has a close encounter with a hawk and it's all caught on camera. RJ Marcus joins us now with all of those stories and more. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, scary situation for this small dog, but uh, he is okay. <laughs> but we'll show you this uh, pretty cool video that the uh, owner got. So it was an interesting encounter there. But uh, obviously we start here with uh, an update on the latest there at the Michigan High School shooting after that shooting there in Oxford, Michigan. Uh, and we have a new cell phone video from a student who was just seeking shelter in a classroom. We'll let this play out so you can get an idea of the terror these students had to go through yesterday afternoon. Yeah, I said it's safe to come out. Now 
we're not willing to take that risk right now. I can't hear you. We're not taking that risk right now. Okay, well, come to the door and look at my bag, bro. No. Yeah, bro. He said bro. He said bro. He said bro. Red flag. Go. <laughs> oh. Slow down. You're fine. Go down. I want you to drop backpacks. We're okay. We're okay. Drop your backpacks. Still. Christy? Yes. Thank you. Drop your backpacks. Oh, it's slippery as I'm not standing on was filmed by a student who was in class as those shots rang out. And as the investigation begins, authorities now looking for a possible motive. At least three students died in that shooting and eight people were wounded by a 15 year old shooter. Authorities quickly found the teenager and arrested him. A move they say saved more lives. The teen's gun had seven more rounds in it. When they took it from him, he had a loaded firearm and he was coming down the hall. That again, I believe interrupted what potentially could have been seven more victims. The very first thing is, in my head was, this is actually happening. I'm going to text my family, say I love them, just in case if I were to die. Yeah, just a scary scene all the way around. Police say the teenager's dad actually bought the gun last Thursday during a Black Friday sale. Investigators say charges could be filed soon. Okay, now to an update on a story we told you about earlier this week. Police say no charges will be filed in that deadly college boxing match in Nevada. The death has been ruled a homicide, but a county official says that does not mean that a crime has been or was committed. The Nevada State Athletic Commission is investigating after a University of Nevada Las Vegas student, that's UNLV, collapsed during a charity boxing match. 20-year-old 20, 20 Nathan Valencia later died in the hospital. You see that video there. The coroner says he had internal bleeding. Right Right now, investigators are trying to answer questions like whether there were medical personnel, personnel on site, how experienced the referee was, and who actually played the matchmaker in setting up these amateur student fights. They say right now, there just are not a lot of answers. Our hearts go out to the Valencia family. This is unnecessary. It shouldn't have happened. And uh, that's why we have the Nevada State Athletic Commission, because combat sports are just that. It's not a joke, it's serious. And Nevada takes this very seriously with regard to the life, safety, and health of those that combat within the state. So the attorneys for Valencia's family say they welcome the Athletic Commission's investigation and they want to hold those responsible for the death of Nathan accountable for their actions. Taking you to Alabama now, have you ever had a package that just, well, never showed up? That happened to one family there in Blunt County, Alabama, and here is why. Check out all these packages that were just kind of dumped in a ravine. The sheriff's office said they found between 300 and 400 packages tossed into that ravine on private property. This is about 40 miles outside of Birmingham. A few of those packages belong to Chris and Andrea Fincham. Investigators say the driver just left the packages there at least six separate times. That means FedEx is also a victim of six different property theft cases. Authorities say there are also about 450 individual victims. The Fincham say online shopping might be a thing of the past for them for someone to um, not consider how hard people work for things and just to it's like they're just throwing our money out on the ground I am probably done online shopping I'm probably going to continue in store shopping for the rest of the season um, just because I am a little bit hesitant yeah, look at that. That's a lot of packages there. Xboxes, all sorts of things. FedEx says they are attempting to deliver as many recovered packages as possible. The driver, the name of the driver has not been released at this time. 
And finally, a story of survival for one small Chihuahua in Houston. Her name is Lola and her life was nearly cut short last week. Check this out. Lola's mom, Catherine, says she let the 12 week old puppy out to do well her business. When the unthinkable happened, a giant red tailed hawk just swooped in and tried to steal Lola. Check that out. Oh, oh. quick. Quick movement there by Lola. <laughs> Luckily, mom was just a few, a few feet away and helped scare the hawk away. As for hawk attacks, the Wildlife Center of Texas wants pet owners to know while they can happen, they say it's actually pretty rare. It's a possibility that the hawk could have grabbed the dog and could have done some damage, possibly even killed the dog, but this is a very rare occurrence for hawks. All right, well, Catherine says her advice <laughs> to other pet owners is to obviously watch them at all times and uh, beware of hawks. That was a pretty quick move there by Lola. She kind yeah. of sensed it. And the owner. <laughs> and the owner too, yeah, she yeah. jumped in right away. But uh, I've noticed that these hawks fly a little bit lower now. I, I know that they're probably looking for food, maybe rodents, Dang. things of that nature. But yeah, oh, I've come across goodness. some out on a jog and they're just kind of like flying. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Right on you. Watch your hat. <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thanks guys. It is now 913 and 60 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, here from one of the first people to begin research on the Omicron variant of COVID-19, what he says about this strain of the virus after the break. And also coming up later, we're going to take you live to the west side of the city where a new high school is opening up this morning. Tiffany Huertas has the details coming up in a live report. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. I'm Hunter Townsend with the Republic of Texas Window Company, and we want to take a minute to thank our veterans and first responders for their service this holiday season. Happy Holidays! When it comes to fighting the new Omicron variant of the coronavirus, health experts around the world are doubling down on their advice to get vaccinated. Just this morning, South Korea confirmed their first case. CNN's Nick Watt reports. The question is when, not if, the Omicron variant reaches the United States could already be here. Among the first to study Omicron, this guy. It looks like a problem, but we don't know to what extent it's going to be a problem. Um, I wouldn't at this point uh, say that this is hugely different from stuff we've seen before. I think we'll get some information on transmissibility and severity in the coming days, maybe a week or two. I do think it will take some time for us to get a better understanding of the impact on vaccines. Our estimate is between two and four weeks. Here's what we already know about Omicron's mutations. These mutations have been associated with increased transmissibility and immune evasion. So will vaccines work as well as they did against the Delta variant? There is no world, I think, where the effectiveness is the same level, Moderna's CEO told the Financial Times. If Omicron does indeed diminish protection from vaccines? Boosters should reduce dramatically the gap. This variant was first detected in Southern Africa, now dominant down there. What we are presenting to primary healthcare practitioners are extremely mild cases, so mild to moderate. Still, Dr. Fauci cautioning against such anecdotal accounts. Most of those are among younger individuals. We believe that it is too soon to tell of what the level of severity is. And remember, this will likely not be the last coronavirus variant. Omicron is like a wake-up call, as though we needed another wake-up call to vaccinate the world. One of the best ways to keep Americans safe is actually to vaccinate the world. Because the more the virus spreads, the more it mutates. And here in the US, authorities are upping their surveillance at four of the busiest international airports, JFK, Newark, Atlanta, and San Francisco. And also, they are now analyzing one in seven of all positive tests looking for variants. Nick Watt, CNN, Los Angeles. And city health officials say even with the emergence of the new COVID-19 Omicron variant, vaccines are still the best weapon against a holiday surge in cases. CDC recommending all adults ages 18 and up get booster shots to protect against Omicron. Along with the vaccines, local health experts say testing is equally important to know which strains of the virus are in our area. 
Testing doesn't mean you have to test every single sample that tests positive for COVID. As long as you have a good representative samples tested positive and further sequenced, you, are, you stand a good chance of picking up the, the variant strain. And if you want some more information on the latest variant, the Omicron variant, and booster shots, you can go to our website, kset.com. Got a lot of information there for you about it all. Very good. And we are at 61 degrees now. Um, not as cold as yesterday, but, you know, still not the middle of the summer. So we'll take it, right? Yeah, Justin? <laughs> this is true. Uh, feels okay. We've got some moisture surging back in here, and it's been a, sort of a foggy morning for some of us, not all of us. Uh, we're still detecting some pretty decent fog in spots. Let's take a look at the map, and you see around Hondo, a lot of improvement there down towards Pleasanton. That's kind of the last spot where visibility is really down. And then there are some spots out in the whole country too. Rock Springs, I should mention that, and Carrizo Springs dealing with a little bit of fog. Uh, I want to show you a picture coming in from uh, the trans guide there around uh, I-35 and 1604. Still a little bit of fog hanging on there on the southwest side of Bear County. But I would imagine within the hour, we're going to see most of this go away. Obviously, the dense fog advisory is now gone. Let's look at December. We are now officially in December, obviously, and uh, the monthly rainfall average for the month is two inches here in San Antonio. Uh, it doesn't always come in the form of rain, by the way. We have had some snow events, but mostly in the form of rain. That's just the average. And the average temperatures, we start off at 67 to start the month and see that average come down to about 63. Average low, 45. First of the month, by the end of the month, 41. So uh, obviously it's sort of a, a cooler month and we'll see how temperatures play out. So far, we've started off fairly mild and temperatures are forecast to stay in the 70s all the way through uh, into next week. As we look at the uh, picture outside, mostly clear skies, just some thin serious clouds over top of the airport. But you look off in the distance, looks like we have a little bit of a low cloud deck there off to the uh, north and west. There have been some clouds around. Uh, Kerrville and up towards Comfort. We'll keep an eye on that, but I, I think we'll see uh, partly to mostly sunny skies throughout the rest of today. 60 degrees right now at the airport. And as we look at the satellite picture, uh, you can see some of those uh, thicker clouds off to the north and west. 59 Bernie Stage, 59 rain off, 57 in New Braunfels. Mostly clear there, but you've dealt with fog for much of the morning. 55 Carrizo Springs, 58 right now in Del Rio. Dew point tracker shows that uh, we are going to see fairly high dew points all the way into Sunday. Now, by Sunday evening into Monday, cold front comes through. Weak cold front dries us out a little bit. But in the meantime, we could see some more fog next couple of days. Big picture here, only one little system working across the country. That's bringing some rain to places like St. Louis, Chicago, and then snow to parts of Michigan. But that really is the only weather maker today. And as we look at our forecast, there's not a lot to generate any rain going forward. Just a few clouds today, a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. And then on Friday, there is a piece of energy that comes out of Mexico and that may generate a shower or two. But don't get too excited because rain chances are not great here. We're talking 20 percent. And then uh, we may see another small chance Sunday into Monday with that front. 75 degrees today, southerly winds 5 to 10. We will see those clouds increase tonight and a chance for some fog and morning clouds again tomorrow. 76 on your Thursday, 74 Friday, 20% chance of rain. Hey, the Rock and Roll Marathon is this weekend. It looks like the weather's going to cooperate for the most part. 20% chance of rain, though, uh, Sunday, late Sunday into early Monday with that next front, guys. A little Not warm for you? Well, rock and roll it's been worse <laughs> in the past, so this is not too bad. That's not too bad? No, it'll, it'll be okay. Although, uh, I, I have to say that I guess doing the half is a little better because if it's you're doing the full and then you're doing that like when it's almost 90 degrees, yeah. that's tough, you know, when the, the weather changes. So I think this should be I, okay. I can only imagine. <laughs> David. Well, what have I always told you? <laughs> you're a, a rester, not a runner. And that's, and that's okay. I rest and watch. <laughs> that's okay. Still ahead on GFS at 9, you may start to notice more holiday decorations around the city, specifically on windows. We'll introduce you to the man behind some of these murals coming up next.
It is never too early for Christmas, according to one local artist. Todd Robinson makes sure businesses are all dressed up for the holidays. He paints the festive displays you see on many of their windows, but he says he is an all-around artist, one who paints murals, portraits, and signs. Robinson caters to his customers, even painting snowy scenes when the weather still calls for snow cones. You got a lot of people that start in June. What? Like Cash America, the pawn shops, they start their Christmas layaway in June. Yeah, Robin says the real Christmas rush for him starts the weeks before Thanksgiving. You can see more of his story in this week's If These Walls Could Talk. Just head over to our website, kset.com. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. So when you're out pretty. jogging, you can go by and check out some of his art. <laughs> Take some pictures with my phone. There you good go. idea. Good idea. It's good stuff. 929, 61 degrees. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. What kind of improvements are being made to the power grid here in San Antonio? CPS and SAWS scrambling to make sure we do not have a winter like last year. The latest changes being made and how it affects you coming up. Plus, a new program in South San Antonio ISD is hoping to improve the mental health of students after a tough year dealing with everything that COVID-19 threw at them. And welcome back. It's 933. Top stories we're following today. Questions remain after a northwest side shooting sent one man to the hospital. It happened around 2 this morning in the parking lot of the dive bar at Babcock and Prue Road. That's where police tell us a man was shot in the hand. At this time, investigators say that man does not know who shot him. And a teenage girl is battling critical injuries this morning after a shooting last night on the north side. It happened just after 9 p.m. on Greencrest Drive, just west of I-10. Officers tell us the girl was meeting up with the suspect in front of a home when the shooting happened. The girl was taken to the hospital and remains in critical condition. We are told that suspect drove off in a dark colored vehicle and is still on the run. And a man and a woman are in the hospital this morning after an early morning crash on the south side. This happened on Shane Road just south of Loop 410. According to police, two people had to be rescued from their car after it went over railroad tracks and then crashed into a tree. Both the man and woman inside were taken to the hospital. Both were badly hurt. The woman's injuries are said to be more severe. Right now, there's no word on what caused the two to crash their vehicle, but police did say they were speeding. And we now know the name of the Bear County Sheriff's cadet who died after a training exercise. That man was 59-year-old Kevin Rowe. The Bear County Medical Examiner listing cardiovascular disease as his cause of death. The Sheriff's Office says he began to have trouble breathing during that training exercise and was allowed to rest but ended up losing consciousness. He was taken to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Funeral arrangements are now being made for Rowe. The Sheriff's Office says Rowe will receive full honors. And cleanup is underway after an early morning fire on the west side that happened at a storage shed near Fredericksburg and Ramona. Firefighters say the shed was fully engulfed when they got there. Crews say they're not sure what sparked that fire. No one was hurt. This morning, a new high school in the west side celebrating its grand opening. Learn for Life Edgewood High School is offering a flexible schedule, small class sizes and personalized learning support. Tiffany Huertas now joins us live at the new school this morning. Tiffany, talk to us about the school. Looks pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Good morning, David and Stephanie. Learn for Life is a network of schools. They serve at-risk students, 47,000 of them. There's schools in already here now in Texas. They have schools in California, Michigan. And to talk about this latest school here in San Antonio is the principal, Chrissy Franco. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Talk to us about this Learn for Life here, this brand new school, and the students you're going to be serving. Thank you so much. Yes, so we are super excited. We are the first campus in Texas. Learn for Life Edgewood High School, and we are excited to offer personalized learning. Um, we offer uh, small class sizes. We have less than 15 in our classes. Um, with each of our students, we create an individual plan based on their academic needs, uh, their work life needs, as well as their social emotional needs. And then we take all of those pieces and we build a schedule that works for them. We offer flexible scheduling. Our students attend four hours a day, either in the a.m. or the p.m., depending on, on what works for them. Um, and we are just super excited to be here and to serve uh, the Edgewood community. These students are getting, let's say, a second chance to 
build up their skills. Talk to us about this partnership with Edgewood ISD. So we are in a very innovative partnership with Edgewood, and they have been 100% supportive uh, there to provide uh, any support we need. Um, through this partnership, uh, Edgewood was really looking to redesign their dropout recovery program, um, as Learn for Life does specialize in credit recovery and dropout recovery. And they knew they needed something new, something different, and we have a proven model with over 20 years of success. And so um, through this partnership, we are serving not only their students, but we also serve as students um, outside of the Edgewood boundaries as well. We're open to, to all. How do you think this is going to impact the community here in San Antonio? Uh, I believe it's already impacting because we, um, in our short three months that we've been open, we already have students that are scheduled for graduation in December. Some of these students have been out of school, you know, one, two years, um, have, uh, have not really been able to identify the path that they're looking for in their life. And we've provided that direction. We've provide, we provide career exploration. We provide college prep. Um, we also currently are building our career and technical education program. We will be offering industry-based certifications in the travel and tourism industry, as well as uh, graphic design and animation. Fantastic. And there are already students enrolled, but there's still an opportunity for those that want to join? Absolutely. We do year-round enrollment. Uh, just this morning, we were enrolling a student. So uh, come on by, check us out. We do tours daily. We have orientations, which gives you a full overview of our program and the services we provide to our students uh, three times a week. Perfect. And we're already hearing from people in the community just outside these doors. There was a woman that was saying if we had this program back in the day, it would have helped so much. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. Check out with live cam. There's always back in the day in there. Yeah. But it was better back in the day. <laughs> but no, that looks pretty good right there. That's that's a pretty interesting school. Good luck to those kids. Interesting sky out there. What is What is that? Is that haze or is that fog? What are, what are we looking at? Some, uh, probably just some low clouds there off in the distance is, is what we're dealing with there. We have had some fog, though, this morning. It's been pretty thick in spots, starting to get better. Visibilities are improving as we speak. Let's look again at the visibility map here. And across San Antonio, that fog has never been a problem this morning. It really has been to our east and to our west. Visibility is uh, right at about uh, three quarters of a mile in Pleasanton, and that is an improvement from what we were seeing a little bit earlier this morning. Other spots uh, like skiing out towards Gonzales still dealing with some fog at this hour. And as we zoom out some uh, Eagle Pass, that's another spot that has been dealing with some fog now in Rock Springs. Gonzales close to zero, by the way. Uh, and looking at the uh, satellite picture, you can see some of the clouds that uh, we're perhaps looking at off to the north. Uh, temperatures in the 60s here around Bear County, 61 Kerrville, 60 in Bandera with uh, some thicker cloud cover there. Pollen count is in, mold is low, it's at 250. We've had a good stretch here of pretty good looking pollen counts. Forecast for today, we'll have some off and on clouds this morning, and then I think we'll go mostly sunny this afternoon. 75, your high temperature, another gorgeous day here in South Texas. And guess what? This stretch continues into the weekend. We take a look at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, no complaints for me. Thank you. And after Texas froze in February, a fire was lit under San Antonio's two city owned utilities to ensure the powerless, waterless days their customers struggled through are not repeated. At Garrett Berger checked with Saws and CPS Energy about how prepared they are should Texas freeze over again and what it could mean for you if it does. Following the unprecedented power and water issues Texas and San Antonio saw in the February freeze, a city advisory committee made numerous recommendations on how SAWS and CPS Energy could improve their emergency preparations. Today, utility officials told the council committee they are progressing through those recommendations. From a water service perspective, we are in infinitely better shape than we were last year. Among its improvements, SAWS now has more pumping stations protected from most rolling blackouts, so there's less chance of them losing power and you losing water. If we get into that extreme an event, we probably will have a limited number of people, but nothing like we saw 
during the early event. Overall, CPS Energy says it's added more circuits into its load shedding plants, so more people will share the burden if the utility has to resort to rolling blackouts. That way, an unfortunate few aren't getting hit over and over with hours-long outages as happened in February. So in a URI type event, our modeling shows that we would have uh, Average customer would have a 15 minute outage, outage followed by 15 minutes of power. Whether or not the utilities or their customers have to cope with rotating outages again still comes down to the overall stress on the statewide power grid. Fortunately, though, long term weather predictions at the moment indicate we are unlikely to have a similar freeze again this year. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. It's 942, it's 62 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And still to come, South Sand ISD has a program that is meeting the mental health needs of its students. Why? It's needed now more than ever. And welcome back. It's 945. Depression, anxiety, and fear. There's no denying COVID harmed kids' mental health, and schools say they are feeling it. In the South Sand Independent School District, the need for mental health across the student body has led to new hires and partnerships through their program, Care Zone. The program started back in November of 2019 and offers free mobile services for students and their families. Alicia Beretta has more on the growth of the program and the common issues students talk about. Bobby Mota is a student ambassador for South San ISD's Care Zone program. We help with kids. We need to spread out the word of being kind. The focus is on mental wellness, and after almost two years of virtual counseling sessions, their in person services are needed now more than ever, with 250 students referred just this school year alone. Our community is a predominantly lower income community, and we have a lot of. In, um, intergenerational trauma, intergenerational poverty. So people have lost family members, you know, and sometimes those are the only guardian the child has. Care Zone continues to tackle two of the biggest barriers students at South San face. Transportation um, and then access to mental health services. Flores says the no-cost services have helped kids be kids and succeed in the classroom without having to leave school. For the past year, Rosario Garcia's son, Sergio, has visited with his caseworker once a week. He's telling me he's getting better grades now. Then last year, he was having a lot of trouble with it. We also are able to provide that extra support that his, him, his, his teachers may need as well. Without CareZone, social workers fear these kids would never get the help they need. We would see probably higher rates of self-interest behavior or even, even unfortunately suicide attempts as well. South Sand says they did expect as well as prepare for a higher demand for these mental health services as their students were without social emotional development for so long. So what they did was hire two new social workers to take on more cases as well as help students with resources including food and clothing and now they're looking to hire one more. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. So in November, we had some cool mornings, cold mornings, yeah. and chilly days. We get to December, it's like, <laughs> now spring it's, is spring. It's mild, yeah. but it's still pretty, David. It's well, no, I, yeah, nice I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's like, that, was that winter? Did we, did we have it already? Oh, I'm sure there's, there is more to come. Okay. We still got to get through January and February, but the true. first week of December does look very nice. We've started off fairly mild. Mornings haven't been that cold, and keep in mind, we still have yet to see a freeze here in San Antonio, and there is not one in the forecast. What was the average day for a freeze? The 30, November 30. 30 yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's just the average. We have gone years yeah. where we have not hit freezing. We'll see Ooh. how uh, this year plays out. But uh, looking at the time lapse, it's a beautiful sunrise. You can actually see some of the fog that develops, some of that haze right there on the horizon. Still a little bit of it out there, but most of it is starting to lift. 60 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 57. Northwesterly winds are light and about three miles per hour. And as we look at the satellite picture, you can see where some of that fog still resides right there. You can actually pick it up. A little fog there, a little fog in southeastern Bear County. We've got some low clouds that extend up into the hill country and then back out west and this will have some effect on temperatures. It'll probably keep temperatures down just a little bit for time in Kerrville, Fredericksburg, maybe Uvalde. 60 right now in Del Rio, 60 in Catua. More sun in Kennedy now after a morning with lots of fog, 59 there. Visibility, uh, Pleasanton is still three quarters of a mile. Gonzales still reporting zero visibility. Same for Rock Springs. Eagle Pass is a, at about half of a mile. And this is because dew points increased, humidity increased, 
and the dew points are now in the upper 50s, close to 60. So that's almost, almost in the muggy territory. And we stay that way. Uh, it is going to stay, dew points are going to stay in the 60s all the way through the weekend. Will that lead to rain chances? That's the other big question, right? Uh, Friday, about a 20% chance. I'd say a 20% chance late Sunday into Monday as well. Uh, but these are not great rain chances. I, I mean, I, I think anything we see is going to be few and far between, and it likely will just be in the form of a few showers. Here is the setup. We have a little bit of a trough out across the Great Lakes, but this is not uh, one of those uh, situations where cold air is plunging out of Canada. Uh, most of the country is still dealing with some pretty comfortable numbers. Now, Caribou, Maine, that was one of the cold spots this morning at tw uh, 20 right now, but it was in the single digits a little bit earlier. The rest of the country really doing pretty well. 50s and 60s here in Texas. Uh, we, I do want to take you north though into parts of Canada. There is some really cold stuff up here. Negative 29 copper mine, negative 11 yellow knife. Some cold air trying to build. Sometimes when that happens it will eventually spill down into the United States. There's no indication that that's going to happen just yet, but it is something we want to watch. We'll keep tabs on it. For now it's mild and we're expecting just a few clouds this afternoon, a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. And I mentioned that chance of rain on Friday, a little disturbance rolls through 20% chance of a shower or two around the area. No big deal. Uh, and that'll be the case again Sunday into Monday for today. 75 south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and look for 76 tomorrow, 74 Friday, maybe a few more mornings with some fog and cloud cover. And again, the rock and roll marathon, which the big marathon is there on Sunday, 77. Uh, looks pretty good other than that slight rain chance there Sunday night into Monday. Does cool down just a little bit to start next week, guys. Pretty decent running weather. We'll take it. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, we got to have one polar vortex this year. Got to have uh, just one. <laughs> just, just one. Uh, Maybe on. later. Well, we got time. We got time. It, Plenty you know, of what, time. Two or three months, right? <laughs> well, for this year, just the end of the year. We yeah. still have time either way. Uh, 951, 63 degrees. And details on where you can cut down your own Christmas tree here in San Antonio. Hey guys, good morning. Coming up on live, Rita Moreno from West Side Story Plus Successions, Nicholas Braun and Hanukkah Cooking. See you soon on live. And very often women say they face challenges when it comes to body image, but new studies show it's becoming more of an issue with men. Tomorrow on GMSA, the reason behind the increase in male eating disorders. And of course, a lot of people are shopping for Christmas trees these days. If your family has their tradition of going out and getting a real tree and maybe cock, chuck, <laughs> cutting it down yourself. Cut and chop. It was, cut yeah. and chop it. <laughs> you either, you either chop it or cut it or you cut it or chop it. I don't know which one comes first yeah. or second. It's not there are just, several places. Yeah, it's not to, just up north. We can do it here it. locally. <laughs> Yeah, there's a Divine Acres Farm Shop your own. in Divine, and we have the Pipe Creek Christmas Tree Farm. That's on Phil's Road in Pipe Creek, and we also have a Christmas Tree Farm in Seguin. That's a 4100 Jake's Colony Road. Uh, or you can travel to Austin. Yeah, and make a day want, trip of it. Yeah, if you want a day trip, we have a couple of places up there. Elgin Christmas Tree and then Evergreen Farm. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. But I like this article on our website, kset.com. It says, uh, you can make your wish come true like a Hallmark movie, except you'll be wearing shorts and a t-shirt when you chop down <laughs> your tree, which is very true here. It is true. That is true. And remember, your tree is recyclable. Yeah. And so. yes. check the lights before you wrap the tree. Oh, yeah. You don't yeah. want to wrap it, then the lights don't. And you don't want to throw it away Good with advice. lights on it either. <laughs> no, you don't. Have a great yeah. day.